Hi, it's Jason Cross here again with you. Uh, today we're going to talk about another application that can be used for assessment in the classroom and it's called Kahoot. And Kahoot is a web-based uh, application that can be used cross-platform so it doesn't matter what type of device you're using. It's going to use a web page to access this. So one caution is make sure that this website is unblocked if you choose to use this in your classroom because if it's blocked you won't be able to access any of the features and since it is web-based sometimes that can happen so you're going to want to check for that. Um, so the uh, screen here I've got a couple things I want to show you. I have the the application which is essentially the back-end application at get kahoot.com and I will post all of these links into uh, the comment section as well as in the iTunes U course and then we also have the uh, application where you can actually play the game which is kahoot.it so there, it utilizes two different um, websites to kind of work together to get your end result so get kahoot looks like this and you're gonna sign in and once you sign in, you are set to either play a public Kahoot or you are able to create a quiz, a discussion, or a survey. And we'll talk a little bit about those as we go. Um, then the other side is what I'm showing over here with the um, iPads and I have two iPads that are ready to go and they need a game pin and that's how this operates so if I am a teacher and I create a quiz a discussion or a survey I'm issued a game pin that I could post up on the board and from there my students would be able to uh, access it on their devices and it could be their telephones could be anything so you know those of you who are not in a one-to-one -one classroom this is a great solution because they probably have a phone or an iPod or something that hooks up to the internet. This will work with all of those things. So let's go ahead and look at a, a public Kahoot because I think this is the easiest way to actually see it. So let's do famous tourist attractions and um, I'm just going to give you an example of what this looks like so that you can see how it plays for your classroom. So I've got this quiz named there and it gives me some stuff where I can just Play the game pin throughout, which means um, if you have some students that take a while to get on there, you might want to leave that up so they can get it, or if you have people coming in late, uh, that's one way to do it. Um, this would be a great activity, by the way, for the you know beginning of class. I think this would be something that really, it's so um, empowering to the students and so engaging that they might show up to class just to get a quick game of Kahoot in. So let's go ahead and do launch. And now it's saying, um, you know, get out your phone or your tablets or whatever you have, and there's the game pin that we need. And think of this as that you would have this website up on your main board, and then everybody else would have the, the answer solution on their iPad. So right now, um, this screen here would represent um, your whiteboard or your projector or your TV or whatever you have in your classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that game pin in here. And now we are joining the game. I'm going to ask for a nickname. So I'm going to do John and Sally. There we go. So now it says I'm in. So as a teacher, you'll see that you have two players. You have John and Sally in, and the game pin is still up. And if I have everybody in my class logged in and I'm ready to roll, I would hit start now. And in this example, I only have two players, so this is gonna be how it goes. But you could do a very large group if you wanted to. So this is 24 different questions. And you'll get the idea after the first couple, you'll see it's gonna do a countdown for all the students. And then it's going to show um, whatever your question was. In this case, it's giving a picture, which is a neat kind of question. What is this? So now we have to pick, is it the you know, Arc of France? Is it the Victory Arc? Well, we think it's the Arc de Triomphe, and we're correct. Now, what it does is it's based on time. So the faster you answer, you can get the maximum of 1,000 points per question. If you take longer to answer the question or you get it wrong, you're going to get varying degrees of points. So in this case, the answers were fairly quick. John and Sally both got um, 733 points, so it kind of keeps their position. So this is not this this game is about speed as well. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and do the next one. 
and it's gonna give us our countdown again. And here we go. All right, which one is this? So in this case, maybe my class is a little bit uh, less comfortable. So I'm just gonna have them pick uh, a couple random answers here. All right, it looks like Sally got it right and John did not. And you'll see here that the points kind of adjust accordingly. So we're, we're starting to see a, a differentiation in the points. All right. So now I'm going to advance you kind of to the end because I want to show you what it looks like after all of the answers have kind of been given. All right, so here we are at the end of the game, and you're going to get your scoreboard, your final scoreboard. And this is really the game-driven uh, content that really gets the students so excited about taking this, this quiz. Um, they get to kind of uh, see how they did. It's a little bit competitive. It's a lot of fun. You could do it as a group. And we're going to go ahead and end and when you see end, it's going to give kind of a shout out to the person that won. And now you're going to get feedback and results. And I think this is a really great tool for teachers to get an idea of kind of how the activity actually went. And so it gives everybody an opportunity to rate the, uh, the quiz. So they can do that with stars. So they can pick how many stars they think the uh, quiz earned. They can say if they learned something. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of this stuff in. You can say if you recommend it uh, in the future, and then you can kind of give a feeling of how well you thought it went. And you can see here now the teacher is going to get feedback that it was fun. Good chunk of them learned. Um, none of them said they didn't learn. They recommend it, and they're feeling pretty good about the overall um, result of the, of the thing. So this is kind of a neat, um, just quick, uh, interesting information you can use in your classroom. Now let's look at the final results. So this is going to again give the scoreboard, but it does give the teacher the advantage of doing something uh, more powerful. So you can download the results. This is kind of what the results look like when you download them. It's uh, This is numbers, by the way. They uh, probably will look a little different in Excel, so you can download them both ways. But it's going to give you the names of all your students. It's going to give you the correct answers. So if you were using this as a grade, you could drop that grade right into the grade book. Um, it gives a score. I don't know, that could be something that you could use in gamification of your classroom. Maybe you'll take the scores and you'll compile them over the course of the year. And you could keep a main leaderboard in your in your school. That'd be kind of fun. Um, and then what you also get is uh, the specific questions. And uh, this is the picture that um, in every um, view of digital assessment, I think this is the most powerful thing that a teacher can use in their classroom is they see which students got which questions right. And with this color coding, you can see that certain questions every student got wrong. Now, albeit I only have two students in this class, but imagine if you have 30 students and you notice that 98% of them miss this specific question, you can really go back then and say, that was something I didn't teach. And it, it's something that is not possible in the analog testing world. This is, this is a lot better data than you'd get in that, um, that old fashioned way. Now, imagine if you tie these questions to specific learning objectives that you have, now you know which objectives you have confidence that your students are going to pass and which objectives need more help. So this is some really good data for you via the uh, you know downloading option of Kahoot. So I hope that you enjoyed looking at this um, view of Kahoot. I think it's a great application. You should try it in your classrooms. Again, remember it is class platform so that you can use it on phones, you could use it on computers, you can use it on netbooks, you could use it on iPads, really anything that has a web browser this will function on. And I think it's a great and valuable tool for you in your classroom.